if I could go back and do it again, I think we could have fixed this much earlier through communication. I think I was afraid to bring it up. If we would have been a little bit bolder to communicate about this stuff, I think we could have started, start off a lot, lot sooner. You need to find out what your wife wants and you have to do that through communication. You're listening to Get Your Marriage On, the fun and spicy podcast, bringing you new tools and fresh ideas so that you can be the sexiest couple you know. Before we get into the episode, I just have a quick announcement. A couple weeks ago, we finished our annual marriage retreat, and it was incredible. 28 couples from all over the country joined us for a transformative weekend. For three days and three nights, we learned how to build a more solid marriage, deep in intimacy, and how to make sex way more exciting and fulfilling. One participant wrote in afterwards to say this, Thank you again. Overall, it was lovely and uplifting. I think every couple should go, and I haven't been able to tell enough people how amazing it truly was. Honestly, had the best sex of my life over the weekend, so thank you. (laughs) And then another person wrote this. The experience was great. We loved our weekend and feel like we came away connected and committed. So, my dear listener, please consider checking out the retreat. Our next one that we're looking forward to is March 23rd to the 26th, 2023. And you can get the details on our website, getyourmarriageon.com, and click on Couples Retreat right in the center. And what you want to do is get on our waiting list. We haven't announced all the details of when you can get tickets and things like that yet. So it's really important that you get on the waiting list now because we only have 20 spaces for couples and it's going to sell out. And those on the waiting list will hear about the availability first. So go to getyourmarriageon.com, click on Couples Retreat, and you'll see the button there to join the waiting list. So check it out. All right. Now on to our guest for today. One of the reasons why I started this podcast is to help as many people as possible realize how wonderful sex is or can be. And although it is sacred between a husband and wife, there is so much joy, excitement, expansion of self, growth, light, connection, and adventure through sex. And it doesn't have to be such a taboo subject. In fact, I believe if more people were willing to open up and talk more about sex what's working for them, things they've learned, I think we'd have many more stronger marriages. And stronger marriages means stronger families, and that will help generations to come. So for the next few episodes, I want to take a break from interviewing experts, per se, and showcase real stories from quote-unquote ordinary couples, but who have built extraordinary intimacy in their own marriages. So I'm excited for you to meet our first couple in this series, You'll get to meet Leanne and Jeff Austin from Georgia. They share their story about how they grew from a functional sex life to an intimate and adventurous sex life later in their marriage. Jeff works as an airline pilot, and Leanne recently started a life coach business by helping people learn how to love themselves and how to build great relationships with their daughters-in-law. Jeff and Leanne, it is such a pleasure to have you on the Get Your Marriage On podcast this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Stan. Yes. So, uh, how did you two meet? How did we meet? Uh, well, I was, um, for those of you familiar with the, uh, Latter-day Saint faith, there's singles wards that are very common in Utah. So in my single days, I used to go single ward hopping mm-hmm. and I eventually come to a singles ward that I kind of made home for, for a little while later. And then one day there was this really cute girl giving a talk and she was reading stories about Mr. Toad and. And other than I was looking at her, I'm like, where has she been? I've been going this ward for a long time and I haven't seen her. And so there at at, at church, I was like, okay, I got to get to know her. So Mm -hmm. um, just invited her out to to go water skiing. And it seemed like we just hit it off after that. It was just, just kind of like a, an automatic thing almost. It was was just enjoying and we had fun and she was not only cute, but she was amazing personality and just someone I wanted to be with. So it was just. Kept kept growing from there. It's beautiful. Well, and he didn't tell the rest of the boating story that I had never been water skiing before, and I couldn't even face the boat. So <laughs> I was trying to like, turn around 
<laughs> in the face of a, and so he was so patient with me because the whole day my objective in the water was to actually look at the boat. <laughs> so it took a few times of us going out to um, get me facing. No, it was super fun. I just in my mind's eye. I imagine you just getting dragged behind by the boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That wouldn't be water skiing. That'd be trolling brigaders. Yeah. It? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And you two have had a lot of adventures together. What's the most adventurous thing you've done together? Uh, I, what do you think? Yeah, I think moving. Like, we live in Georgia. And so Jeff got the job to move out on a Thursday. And we were there. He was there on Sunday night to start class on Monday. So that for us, moving our family, at the time we had two boys and then later here in Georgia, we had two more. So we have four boys. And at the time, moving out 2,000 miles away and leaving everything behind in like a three-day period was like, what in the world are we doing? We had no money. We had no anything. And so many tender mercies made that possible. And it's just like, it's an adventure we're so glad happened now. And it's completely changed our lives. We love it. Well, we even lived apart for about four, almost five months yeah. before you yeah. went out to Georgia with me. So yeah, it was crazy. It was really, really hard. I mean, we had no, I, just the other day, we were just talking about moving out here. And I said, we had no support line out here. There was no family. We had no friends. We knew nothing. We were completely on our own. So it, it was truly an amazing adventure. We continue to have amazing adventures all the time. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, I, if I look back on our life, it just seemed like one adventure after another just keeps on coming for us and opportunities for us and it's it's been an amazing ride that's cool well uh so speaking of adventures marriage is always an adventure yeah, right it's, <laughs> it's two worlds colliding to create a new world and whatever mm -hmm. when it came to sex and intimacy what was it like for you two heading into your marriage like what did you each understand as you came into marriage and how did those ideas serve you at the time the big word that comes to me is inexperience, a lack of knowledge. I mean, I, I guess I didn't even know what to expect with sex and intimacy to start with. So, um, of course, you're always excited to do it. It's, you know, it's that new plateau or the new new step that you're taking, something you've been, at least guys, I guess, dreaming about about that that experience their whole life. And then it's, it was almost like when it, that first time it was like, oh, that's all it was. Uh huh. Almost maybe a letdown a little bit. Um and then I do, I remember one time, you know, I had finished and Leanna was like, well, where are you going? I'm like, well, I'm done. I just thought, okay, once you're done, you're done. You just, you just go about <laughs> your business. And uh -huh. I, it, it took me a long time to realize that uh, it's more about just, just, uh, you know, physical gratification. It's more about a relationship and a partnership. Mm -hmm. So from that, that, in that moment, when I, when I just I realized, Hey, the woman needs some time and attention. I think that was a turning point for me where I started to learn. How, how to be a little bit better and be more mindful of, of, of what, what the woman needs and desires. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. And I just didn't think a ton about it. I'm one of these, you know, kind of a low desire. It's great, but I'm not really thinking about it. I didn't know a ton about it. And so that's kind of where I was with everything. Gotcha. Then as your marriage progressed, was there more conflict or um, friction around sexual intimacy between the two of you? I don't think there was ever conflict or friction that I, at least for my opinion, there was definitely a busy busyness in our lives, you know, with raising kids and, and work and just, you know, things always going on. It seemed like we would go long periods of time, never intentionally. So I don't really feel like that was a conflict, but it was, it was definitely a barrier. And I think you just have to learn, you know, how to overcome those barriers. So in some ways we got a little bit spoiled when the kids would go to school because a lot of times I'm home with my job during the middle of the week and we were able to enjoy each other during the week, during the weekdays. And then as the kids got older, they went to uh, what's called dual enrollment, where they go to high school classes and college classes. And with that dual enrollment, our high school kid was home a lot. And it got <laughs> our, our, our time that we had during the week. And so it took some adjusting there. So it kind of messed some things it, up. It, it, yeah. a lot of things up. You're supposed to be getting older. Get out of the house. So, That's yeah. right. Like I remember when my wife decided to homeschool. Mm -hmm. I, I love coming home for lunch on occasion and <laughs> yeah. having some time together. And that was gone now. Gone. <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. disappointing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and and also again, this wasn't necessarily a conflict, but I always wish that. Uh, I, I felt like Leanne was kind of naive towards sex and had no desire to break out of her shell. Mm -hmm. And I was always trying to figure out how can I get her to break out of her shell 
without pushing her limits. I, and I found that kind of tough to do. Yeah. So how did you deal with that? Just, just slowly. I mean, just a little bit of suggestions here and trying little things there. And uh, I don't think it really was until last October, a year ago, when we, we like to do little getaways every fall. We'd rent a little cabin and one evening we we're just kind of late in bed. We just got talking about stuff. And I started to find out just how, how little Leanne really understood about the subject. Mm -hmm. and, and so it was like, okay, now I kind of understand why it's a little bit of hesitance as I'm trying to pull a little bit without being too forceful is it's not so much of her lack of desire, but her lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so from then she was like, okay, I need to start learning more about this stuff. And she's been amazing this past year, just trying to, to learn about, uh, you know, more, more about sexuality and, and intimacy. So it's, it's, it's been wonderful to kind of watch her and see, see these things. Well, and it, for me, it was like, I just didn't even really know all of these other things. So here's for 25 plus years. I just said, Hey, well, we have sex and, you know, not really like, that's just what you do. And not, I didn't even know there were all these other things. And I started listening to like Amanda's podcast and I, you know, I heard about you, Dan and all these kinds of stuff. And I'm like, wait, there are so many other things that I didn't even know that were out there. And Jeff has always been just so patient and kind. And I, you know, I, when we had sex, it was great, but I didn't know how much more there could be. Gotcha. And, and so I went um, to Amanda's retreat in February and I took my cute daughter-in-laws with me because I have these two amazing daughter-in-laws and, and Jeff and I, when we were talking, we're like, wait, if we're like this, we don't want our kids to experience the same thing where they miss out on 25 years just because it's something that you don't talk about that much. And it kind of gets, you know what I mean? I think what you don't know, it, I don't know. There's so much when you just talk about it and learn about it. And it was just beautiful to spend that time with them and, and help, help us help learn. And then as well as however they choose to function in their marriages, at least having it a conversation. I like that. You want your daughters-in-law to be married to your sons for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we want them to have an awesome sex life. You know? Yes. Just, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so it's we good. Kind of look back now thinking we wish we had known this stuff earlier, but there's nothing we can do about it. All we can do is move forward. But that's why she said, I think I'm going to take my daughter-in-laws to the retreat. And I thought, wow, that, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Because I think sometimes in our culture, you know, being a Christian culture, it's it's almost taboo to talk about this stuff. Yes. That's why yes. I really love the things that the, you are doing and Amanda's doing and other ones out there is is trying to say it, it's okay. Not only is it okay, we should be talking more about this kind of stuff. It yeah. shouldn't be so taboo. Right. Think about 25 years of like that for the next generation, now that you're, you know, encouraging your sons and daughters-in-law to, you know, have a great sex life. You just spare them. They're, they're just going to have so much more joy in their relationship. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. All right. So I'm really curious at this retreat, there was boudoir photography. So Jeff, what were you thinking knowing your wife is going to go, you know, get some photos like that? I was very, very excited. Now, and what I wasn't so excited to see the picture. I mean, of course I was because I know she's a beautiful girl and I know the pictures were going to come out. But I was very excited because I wanted her to be able to see after the pictures come out, how beautiful she was. Mm -hmm. so when the pictures, I mean, the, the pictures were stunning. They were beautiful. And I think a lot of times girls are very self-conscious about their bodies. And I think doing something like boudoir photography can increase confidence. So if any girls are out there thinking about trying it or need a little bit of confidence, that might be uh, something to consider. So the pictures, they came out beautiful. And I hopefully Anne did see that what an amazing, beautiful woman she is. Yeah, yeah. It was really fun to, to, and how the setup was and go in the room and everyone was cheering for each other. I mean, not everyone was in the room, but you know, and uh -huh. just go in with the photographers and they knew totally what they were doing and they were just kind and loving and just, just, it was just very comfortable. And it was fun to see just being placed in different positions and doing different things and, and seeing the photos. That was a fun experience to do. Yeah. Did you look at his photos ago? Yeah, I am. I am pretty good looking. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Right. Like, this is pretty nice. How big does it fall? I like to have fun with Leanne, you know, just tease with her and stuff and have fun. So I knew she was out doing the, the pictures and I was at home. And Leanne tells me, you know, one of the things that turns me on is when you get things done around the house. So I took my camera and set it up on, you know, self pictures and I would 
you know, fixing this and I'd have the ranch and you know, just do a little <laughs> funny sex pose. It's just kind of having, having fun with her. And here's my Bador photography. <laughs> Like doing projects around the house. It was hilarious seeing this little crack when you were doing something. Just so. helping you, like, <laughs> yeah. That's and funny you say that. Jeff. Great, great. Have fun with each other. Everything doesn't have to be so serious. Yeah, yeah. that's funny you say that because my wife Emily was at the same retreat with uh -huh. with Leanne. Yeah, and yeah. she's gonna her, her photos. I knew, like, she told me about approximately what time of day it was gonna happen for her too. So I was doing the same thing. <laughs> her oh, photos. That's for encouraging her. You know? Yeah. We have all the guy pictures. You know? yeah. Those are private. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why we use the Just Between Us app, right? So, yeah. yeah. Yes. yeah. Which, may I put a plug in? We love that love app. That app. Yeah. Love it. It's so fun to do. And we have Jeff has this little thing that it rings every morning when it goes off. And it's just uh -huh. fun to do different things. And the games are so fun. Yeah, so many fun things with that, too. Yeah. Awesome job on that. Yeah. I don't think we've won the uh, Battleship game yet. Yeah. <laughs> the Battleship game. <laughs> good battle strip because it's a yes, shipping battle game. Strips. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. That's so fun. Yeah. Oh, cool. You two are so fun. I want some nitty gritties for those that may be in this stage prior to when like Leanne, um, you know, or both of you, I guess, had that retreat in October to a uh -huh. year ago. Like, well, so what are some of the things that you've learned that you wish you knew before that have really, uh, you know, enhanced your sexual relationship? Oh, that's nitty gritty. Like everything. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking Leanne is like kindergarten level and she didn't know very much. And so just like, like all the what's toys, an example? Uh -huh. The toys that are available, the dill dong thing is still yeah, don't know. Still don't, yeah, I don't even uh -huh. know the name still. Yes, I so, would say, have you heard about you know, this toy? And she's like, I have no idea what all these things are. I'm like, how can you be that naive? I mean, you don't walk when you're checking down the grocery store and see a cosmopolitan and says 10 great tips for the nine. Want to go read that? She's like, uh -huh. no, I never look at that stuff. And, <laughs> and it was hard too because. I would read a lot of that stuff, you know, trying to learn, trying to get better. Uh huh. And it, it would always talk about, okay, guys, women want to go slow. They want lots of foreplay. They want this and this, this. So I'd try to try that Leanne. None of that worked on Leanne. <laughs> no. It's more like, let's get this done so I can check it off and get to the next thing throughout the day. It was, uh huh. It was, so it was uh, frustrating for you because this magazine advice <laughs> it promised me all these great things, but I think I have a, a unique woman here in my life. <laughs> I don't. Well, I, I don't think Leanne's experience is that uncommon. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Well, and he was so patient to be like, okay, and throwing some things out there. Where some of the stuff, I'm like, what people do that? You know? I know. What's like one thing that shocked you? I guess that other people. Uh, do. Just, just like everything, just like uh, you know, learning about bondage and learning about all these kind of things. I'm like, I didn't even know people did stuff like that. Uh huh. <laughs> Kind of the thing. How could you not know? <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> but even like it, Amanda's like doing boudoir pictures and doing like I didn't know people did that and uh -huh. you know doing lap dances and all that kind of stuff. It's just just like all of these things that I'm like, oh, and this could be really fun and once you start like doing these things. And Jeff was really good because he ran the book to kind of transition us into like to do it. We would do this thing he called pillow talk. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So he read the book. She comes first. Yeah, uh -huh. recommended by Amanda. Yeah, and so excellent he, book. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so he just kind of outlined it. And it's actually she comes first. Oh, she, is that what it is? She yeah, comes she first. first. Okay, so by Doctor Ian Kerner. He's been a guest yeah. on my uh, podcast before. Oh, oh awesome. awesome. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, so we read that. He read that, and then he would just outline it because I was busy with work and stuff. And he's like, "Hey, we'll just have pillow talk. I'll tell you about it." And he would just make it so fun because he'd do games with it or say things about it. And we just went through the whole book. So I knew like the parts of my body. I mean, all that kind of stuff that he uh -huh. really was like, hey, let's learn this. And I think me just being listening to things and being more open to all these possibilities. And it's totally OK that we talk about this and do it. It doesn't have to be a hush hush thing. Not only OK, it should be. Yes. Yes, exactly. Why did it take 25 years for the two of you to get to that point? Why not? Why didn't this happen at year five or 10? You know, if I if I could go back and do it again, I think we could have fixed this much earlier through communication. I think I was afraid to bring it up. A lot of it was, you know, for my personal defense, if I bring this up and I get shot down, I'm going to feel kind of 
you know, rejected. And so mm-hmm. I wouldn't talk about a lot of this stuff. I would throw out maybe little soft hints, but you know, they would often go nowhere, which I'm sure for women, you know, they, she throws soft hints at me to go get something done, you know, <laughs> some project that needs to be done. And I don't pick up on that. Was like, uh-huh. <laughs> soft hints are not, maybe they're nice, subtle hints are great sometimes, but sometimes you just need to have a communication and understand what the other person's thinking about, wanting, talking about. And by communication, that's exactly what it is. It's a two-way talk, not just one person listening. I think if if we would have been a little bit bolder to communicate about this stuff, I think we could have started start off a lot lot sooner. And even a lot of the stuff that I'd read, you know, okay, what's the what's the position of the night, or what's the, what's all these different things? Of course, the guy you're one, the nitty gritty stuff. But a lot of these articles kept coming back. It doesn't matter what all these other women in America want. You need to find out what your wife wants, and you have to do that through communication. Well, of course, the guy in me is like boring. You know, we don't want to talk about that. But, uh-huh. but I, I do think it's going to start. Anybody who's in a, in a kind of a rut right now and they're trying to break out of it, I think communication is like 90% of what's going to get it started. Mm, that's good. How about you, Leanne? Why not your five or 10 or two for you? Well, I think it was just doing life and not even really thinking a lot about it. It was just kind of like, oh, there's a thing I need to do. We need to have sex. I almost... I don't want to say need because, but it was kind of like a checkbox. Like he said, okay, let's, we got to get this done and spend, you know, hey, it's been a week or so. Let, no, we got to do this, you know. So it was kind of a checkbox, raising the boys, not really, not really, just not really thinking about it mm. and not being, I don't want to say I wasn't interested, but I didn't seek out all of the things that are available to us, everyone. Uh-huh. <laughs> Were you a little afraid to seek out stuff at first? Like, is it um, really okay for me to do this? I think so. I think that's definitely a Christian upbringing that you just, I mean, you just, uh, yeah, you don't talk about it. You don't, don't, you don't do, yeah, you don't do kinky things per se or whatever. And uh-huh. so, yeah, yeah, for sure. I do ever... still a little bit too, like look, when I said, no, even though she's getting a lot better, you know, so just trying something and she's like, oh, I don't know about that. So she's, you know, it's taken her time to come around to a lot of things. Which there's nothing wrong with that. We're communicating. We're understanding, you know, what each other's thinking. I, she's understanding that I want to try something or and introduce something into our intimacy life. And she's communicating with me. She's a little still uncomfortable, but she's working through it. So, you know, it comes back to that communication. It's the communication that's really our base right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Communication is so important. But yeah. And sometimes I've seen this pattern. We're afraid of rejection or or whatever it might be. You know, it hurts when your spouse doesn't share what you want, right? Mm-hmm. So in an effort to mitigate the pain of rejection, we don't pursue the joy. Mm-hmm. Don't pursue the opportunity of the gain. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we live our marriages in a, a pain mitigation strategy rather than a joy optimization strategy, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So yeah. it's great to see you two like choose. Well, we're going to choose joy, and it might hurt sometimes uh-huh. if you know, we're not on the same page. But at least we're pursuing this growth together. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think Jeff's really good. Hey, we want. I want to try this or whatever. But he's. It's not like we have to try this. It's like, oh, I just. I want to think about that before I do that. And it's totally. He's given me the space. Or I'll try something. Okay. Cause I think, hey, if I try something, even let's try it a few times before I decide I don't like yeah. it. You know what I mean? Not so just, just yeah, just being open to be like, okay, let's try this a few times. If it's still a no, great. Or if it's I'm still thinking about this, I may eventually get to it, but there's no pressure for him. him. So I think right. that's helpful to to work that way too. That, you know, both of us coming from the place we want to. And just remembering too that that it's I, I think I thought, I don't know if I thought this or not, but sex is sacred. It's not this sinful thing. And so I think remembering that is key as well. Like this is sacred and it's it's beautiful and it's okay. And what God intended, it's not, does it have to be this other stuff? So. Right. We used to grow up thinking sex is the devil's playground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But the devil's playground isn't sex per se. It's deception. It's lying. It's mm-hmm. hiding. It's controlling. It's manipulating. That's that's mm-hmm. the playground. That's the devil's playground. And there are people who do that through their sexuality, right? Mm-hmm. And, but then again, sex can also be a place of peace, adventure, openness, yeah. expansion, yeah. growth. 
light, yeah. joy. Yeah. That's yeah. that's not from Satan. That's from God. I, exactly. I totally agree. Yeah, that beautiful connection. Yeah, mm. I love it. You mentioned uh, a lot of these ideas were inherited from your Christian upbringing. Have you thought much about uh, there's a difference between Christian culture about, around sexuality versus, I guess, more like the theology, the doctrine of Christianity yeah. when it comes to sex? I think about that a lot, a lot. Um, not just even around sex, just so much, you know, in, in Christian culture, there's so much, there, there's the doctrine uh, mm-hmm. uh, of, of Christ or the doctrine of the religion. But to me, that's like, there's so little of the doctrine. Most of it is culture built around that doctrine. And I think a lot of Christians have a hard time filtering between the doctrine and the culture. Yes. So uh-huh. the culture changes all the time. There's nothing wrong with change at all. The doctrine is sound. The doctrine doesn't change. But sometimes our, our understandings of the doctrine changes, our perceptions of the doctrine changes, or maybe even our culture or, our, you know, just our habits change or the way we do things change all the time. And some people have a hard time with change, but change is growth. We all should be changing. Again, that doesn't mean doctrine change, but we all, we need to understand here's the doctrine, but about 80%, I'll bet you what we do in the church or any church is cultural driven. And a lot of it is driven by our Puritan ancestors that we don't do these kinds of things. You don't talk about this. You don't say this and that kind of thing. So Yeah. It's just handed mm-hmm. down generation to generation. It is. Yep. And it's so cool, Leanne, to see you like, no, we're going to not continue this to the next generation i'm taking my daughters-in-law to a sex yeah. retreat <laughs> yep. that's exactly right yep. a woman's sex Done with that it. is so cool uh, yeah yep. exactly. uh, and i know you leanne you you told me something that i thought was really profound how uh, it wasn't up until a few years ago how you've really learned how to like yourself can you mm-hmm. tell me more about that absolutely yeah i think i spend most of my life just putting myself down oh i don't look very good in this oh this uh, so many just put down sometimes so sneakily, I didn't even see that I was doing it. And then five or six years ago, I noticed that with some of my friends, they would just put themselves down for stuff. I'm like, wait, what are we doing here? I mean, the basic commandments, love God, love others, love me, but we're forgetting the love me part. And so I am just passionate about us loving ourselves and learning to love ourselves because when I love me, I am so much better with sex and everything, you know what I mean? Because I have that confidence, like, I love me, and it's okay that I have some extra pounds of my tail lining. It doesn't matter. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It's like all of these things that it's like, I, just loving ourselves, I think, changes everything. And so I love talking about the importance of loving ourselves and our daughter-in-laws too, but uh-huh. <laughs> especially loving ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So was there like a day where you felt like this big shift in you where you're like, oh my goodness. I need to love myself better. Like, what were those circumstances like? What? Um, yeah, I think I was going through the life coach school. So I was learning, you know, different training there. It was that unconditional love thing that we can love ourselves no matter what. And I think to me, also in the Christian religion, God loves us no matter what. And I think mm-hmm. kind of that all connected with me that I was like, wait, I can love me. I can love everyone else. No one, I can drop that I think whatever else should be doing or what I think I should be doing, all of that. I can just, I can just show up with love. And I think decisions that our kids have made and different things like that too. I love coming from a place of love. And when I come from that place, it's so much more beneficial than what I'm coming from judgment or criticizing or all of the things. So that, that has been life changing for me. And I think that's really helped in opening me up to doing whatever, you know, just uh-huh. fun. So, yeah. Well, not doing whatever, but I, I think I know what you <laughs> yeah. mean. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yes. Thank you for clarifying yes. that. <laughs> you know, choosing more joy and expansion, you know, exactly. that's mm-hmm. what it should be. Cool. Mm-hmm. You two are so awesome. I'm so glad you're here to tell your story. As we wrap up today, what are your black belt sex tips for couples that are just, let's say they have a good emotional connection. They're they're, you know, they talk well, they're, they're getting the communication down better, like all those things you talked about. Now they want to take their marriage, their sex life to the next level. What advice would you give them? Mm-hmm. You want to go first? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I went, go well, okay. I say be adventurous. Like, I like I, yeah, like 
I I did some lap dancing at the retreat I went to, and I just got home right before this call, Dan, from a pole dancing class. I'm like, I found one in the area, and like, go do fun things. And I can't wait to show Jeff my pole dancing video. <laughs> awesome. I mean, like, yeah. just being open to trying new things, and it's okay if you don't like them. You don't have to do them if you don't like them, but being open to trying different things, that's that's my advice. Excellent. Great. For me, I first I want to open it up with kind of towards the women because the guys, we can stand in front of the mirror and we can take off our shirt and we can see our big old, you know, pot belly and kind of flex our muscles a little bit. We just think we're the, the cutest thing out there. But women look in the mirror and they see, you know, all the flaws that they have. Mm-hmm. And you know, we talked about how we do a little pillow talk where I'll come up with a subject. I'll do some research on it. We'll talk about it. And so one of the pillow talks we did was like a little questionnaire. And one of the questions was, would you rather... Be in an intimate relationship with someone who had a perfect body and figure or someone who knew how to use their body perfectly. And uh-huh. we both answered, we don't care if someone has a perfect body, but learning to use that body perfectly is, is, is was high on our list. And so guys, women, whoever might have a little bit of a self, you know, maybe loathing or I'm not quite, you know, as hot as I should be. That doesn't matter. You go fun, you have fun and, and enjoy it. But I think uh, my black milk sex tip is understanding the sexual response the cycle for a woman you know how it starts how it progresses how it, you get to the 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 climax and how a woman you know men once climax is it's, it's linear it's over but the woman you can actually reset that whole thing and start it all over again so me as a guy understanding that i try to be very well be, be very aware of why we're we're being intimate where is leanne on that cycle and what can i do to help her progress and maybe how can we reset and get her to go through the, the circle all over again? So I'm trying to listen to her, look at her responses, watch her face, that kind of stuff, and and just kind of uh, see, if, is that working? Is it not working? And go with that. So that's my black belt sex, sex tip. Be, be in two with your partner and see if what you're trying is working. That's good. That is so satisfying, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so good. So glad to have the two of you here. Thank you. Anything else last minute or... Uh, sorry, not last minute. As we conclude, at last, you want to share. Yeah. How about with regards to having adult children, talking about sex with adult children? Oh, mm. I think just being open, having the communication going, not making it hush hush. Um, we have like a little text group with our married children and us, just uh-huh. that send funny memes or whatever. You uh-huh. know, just like just to keep it a conversation where they feel comfortable. We feel comfortable just talking about things and knowing, and yes, we have sex and we want it to be wonderful for everybody. So, yeah. That's very good. Great. Yeah. Well, if people want to find you, Leanne, online, what's the best way to find you? Oh, thank you. You can follow me on Instagram, Leanne Austin Coaching, or my website's leanneaustin.com. Very good. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dan. This was awesome. Thank you for your work. We hope that you enjoyed this episode of Get Your Marriage On. And if you did, we would love it if you would take a few seconds to give us a rating on iTunes and to share the show with your friends. They'll thank you for life. Once you've done that, you can head over to GetYourMarriageOn.com for more resources about today's topic and to download our amazing marriage apps. Now go get your marriage on.